When I began experiencing perimenopausal symptoms at 39, I had no idea, not even a clue, because I was 39. And who thinks about menopause in your 30s? This new stage of womanhood was the furthest thing from my mind, especially since I just wrapped up the diaper stage with my second kid. But during a conference in Canada, I find myself sweating during the session. And as a girl who loves to work outside in 90 degree heat, sweating in a chilly conference room was highly unusual, especially since I'm always draped in a sweater indoors during the summer. At the time, I fell down some health rabbit holes and I was diagnosed with SIRS. This is a condition where my body doesn't respond well to everyday toxins, so I just thought the toxic fragrances scattered all around the hotel were making me sweat profusely. After going through various health protocols with little improvement, I decided to have my hormones tested to see what else could be going on. When I got the practitioner's reply, the first thing she said was that my estradiol was very low for my age, and this suggests that I'm going into menopause. No joke, this was the very first line of her response. No, hey, how's it going? Can I buy you a drink? We gotta start with, hey, you're 39, here's some menopause. And my world came to a standstill because after all of the health improvements I made over the last half decade, how the heck were my ovaries failing me now? And it's not like I was trying to have another baby. It's just that going into menopause in my late 30s seemed so final. Like, I no longer had a choice in the matter. Plus, I always thought of menopause as something for older women, like closer to 60, not 39. After experiencing one of the most dreaded symptoms of perimenopause, I began researching what I can do about my ever-expanding waistline. And what I came up with was, just deal with it, you old hag. Okay, so nobody called me an old hag, but when article after article said that there's not a whole lot that I could do about the weight gain associated with perimenopause, they may as well have. Thankfully, I wasn't content just sitting back and suffering. I kept digging for answers, and I'm happy to report that all of the digging helped me lose 40 pounds this past year, and that's a full five years into finding out that menopause was on the horizon. So while the good news is, I finally figured out how to stop perimenopausal weight gain, and I'm closest to the leanest that I've ever been, the bad news is it took a whole lot of trial and error and misery to get here. But I don't want that misery for you. Even if you've heard that waking after 40 for women is inevitable, I want to show you the top three things that can help you defy the perimenopausal weight gain odds too. Since weight loss all comes down to the daily habits that you follow, let's talk about the top four habits you'll need to form in order to kick perimenopausal weight gain's butt. Number one, setting up your deficit and tracking calories. In case you haven't heard by now, weight loss is all about calories in versus calories out. And while many women interpret the SECO method as a strict low calorie diet with tons of intense cardio, nothing could be further from the truth. At least if you want a weight loss plan that works through menopause and beyond. The key to lasting weight loss is to figure out the most amount of calories you can eat while still losing at a moderate pace. So while some diet plans may tell you to start with a 1200 calorie diet and then add in as much cardio as you can handle, the best way to deal with a 40 plus year old body that is way more prone to stressful situations is to purposely lose weight at a slower pace. So this means no more crash diets and no more fad diets that promise quick results. Instead, you'll want to start by calculating your current maintenance calories. And you can do this by finding a reliable online calculator and then adding in your stats. Once you get your maintenance number, subtract somewhere between 3 to 500 calories depending on how active you are. Then grab a macro app and track your meals and snacks throughout the day. Now if I just lost you because I mentioned the T word, I need you to come back to me. I promise once you get the hang of tracking, it's not as painful as it sounds. And tracking takes less than a minute for most meals, and the real data that you pull from this habit is the best way to win at weight loss long term. In order to take this step to the next level, add all of your data into a spreadsheet that you'll analyze on a weekly basis. This will help you see how your week balances out because you need to see both your high days and your low days in order to figure out what changes need to be made. Now, as an example, if you faithfully abide by a 1500 calorie diet all week long, but then you blow it and overindulge every single weekend, 
you don't actually follow a 1500 calorie diet. You're averaging closer to 2000 calories per day once you add in those weekend cheat days. So if your plan was to cut 500 calories per day because your maintenance calories fall somewhere around 2000, as you can see, this is not a plan that will work when you don't account for every single day of the week, both high days and low calorie days. Now, once you have your weight loss calories set up, the second thing you need to pay attention to is protein. While protein is essential for so many functions, the reason you wanna keep protein high during your fat loss diet is so that you lose mostly fat and not your precious muscle. Now I know most women watching this video don't have morphing into the Incredible Hulk on your mood board, but you wanna keep as much muscle as possible whenever you're on a diet, especially if you're trying to lose weight over 40. One reason to eat more protein is you start to lose muscle as you age. So if you don't do things like resistance training and eating enough protein, then you'll just keep losing muscle. And the more muscle you lose, the less calories you burn. The less calories you burn, the less you can eat while still losing weight. And as we just talked about, you wanna eat as much as you can while still losing at a moderate pace, so that way you don't slow your metabolism down. Since you're already tracking calories, tracking protein is easy. Just do your best to center every meal and snack around protein in order to hit your daily target. If you're unsure how much protein is right for you, as long as you aim to eat at least your target weight in protein each day, then just know that you're on the right track. So let's say your goal is to weigh 150 pounds, then all you need to do is shoot to eat 150 grams of protein throughout the day. And while this formula sounds simple enough, this may be a number that you have to work up to because most women aren't used to eating even close to this amount of protein. Number three is you need to weight train. Did you know that you can lose 20 pounds, but if half of the weight you lose is fat and the other half is muscle, then you'll actually end up with a higher body fat percentage. Plus, you'll have a slower metabolism, making weight regain more likely. And the reason 95% of people regain everything they lose plus more is most people only care about the number on the scale. And as long as that number goes down, then the diet must be working, right? Except if you only care about getting that number down as quickly as possible and you don't care if you lose muscle right alongside fat, then your weight loss diet is making you fatter even if your scale says otherwise. We just talked about how important retaining lean muscle is during your diet and avoiding weight regain is the biggest reason why. Of course, there are plenty of other benefits to at least retaining the muscle you already have, but if you don't weight train two to three times per week during your diet, you are all but guaranteed to lose muscle right alongside fat. On the contrary, when you implement a resistance training program that includes progressive overload, then you're more likely to at least retain the muscle that you have or even gain more muscle while you're losing fat. Even better, exercising the right way more often during perimenopause will make the transition into menopause so much smoother. Number four, you need to move more. When we talked about weight loss coming down to calories in versus calories out, I mentioned that overdoing cardio isn't the best approach, and I still stand by that. After all, if you bust out 45 minutes on the Stairmaster and then you end up sitting around for the rest of the day because you exhausted your energy, sure, you may have burned three or 400 calories if you're lucky, but what about all of the neat calories that you're missing out on? Now, I'm not saying that some cardio won't benefit you or even your fat loss plan, but relying mostly on cardio to burn fat is a losing battle. Trust me, I tried that method for 30 years and it did not work. This is especially true if you're someone who eats more on the days that you hit the treadmill hard because the calories you burn on your smartwatch, they're not accurate. The calories burned on the cardio machine, even worse. And a lot of times hitting these machines hard makes you even hungrier later that day. When you end up eating back what you burn, that is a huge weight loss mistake which is another reason that overdoing cardio to burn more fat could be working against you. Still, more movement matters for fat loss, and that's where tracking daily steps comes in. Instead of rearranging your life to fit in another formal cardio session, take advantage of less stressful movement like walking. Even though walking doesn't burn as many calories as more intense workouts, adding more walks comes with tons of health benefits. One of my favorite benefits of adding more walking into my routine is that it makes for a great appetite suppressant. So not only am I moving a little bit more by walking throughout the day, 
but walking is also helping me eat a little bit less, which are both weight loss wins. And even beyond adding a few walks into your day, try to fit in more neat activity. So you wanna do things like parking at the back of the lot or getting up and stretching in between work projects or maybe even pacing back and forth while you're on a call. Even though all of these action seems small, neat calories can make up hundreds to thousands of extra calories burned throughout the day, and most of these activities won't increase your appetite like more intense cardio can do. There you have it, four simple ways to combat perimenopausal weight gain after 40. If you come across someone who says you just have to deal with the weight gain hand you're dealt, well, obviously that person hasn't tried these proven methods. Taking these four steps has been life-changing for me. And I promise if you're consistent with this routine, it can be life-changing for you as well. If you wanna learn even more about the habits I follow to lose weight and finally keep it off for good this time, be sure to watch this video next. And if you're someone who's ready to quit yo-yo diets for good with a plan that helps you get consistent results, check the pinned comment. I'll add the link for you to set up a free coaching call to see if one-on-one -on -one coaching is right for you.